Hi, my name is Sandro Queiroz. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Life and Health Science Research Institute in the University of Ming, Braga, Portugal. And I'm here to present the work I developed as part of my submission to the MNMS2 challenge to be held at MECA 2021. The challenge focuses on the segmentation of the right ventricular chamber in cardiac MRI image, and the goal is to segment both the short axis tag of and the long axis image of each patient. In order to do this, the challenge organizers, which I take the opportunity to acknowledge, have prepared and made available a cohort of 360 cases divided into three groups. The training set with 160 patients covering six pathologies and the ground truths made available for both images and for both ventricles. A smaller validation set with eight pathologies, two of which not found within the training set and for which only the images are made available to the participants. And a test set with 160 patients in which the participants must submit both the code and treatment models for evaluation. This is the data that is made available, and my goal within this challenge was to try to come up with a unified model that would allow us to uh, segment both the short axis tag and the long axis image simultaneously and at once uh, in order to take advantage of the complementary information that they share. And so to do this, I target my attention to three core components of a deep learning uh, pipeline, the pre-processing stage, the architecture itself, proposing a unified cross-view model that I named XUNet, and the training stage, more specifically, the augmentation routine used. So starting with the pre-processing stage, this is an example of a pair of images from a given patient. So you have a long axis image, you have the short axis uh, stack. And we, when looking at this image, we don't know a priori the location and orientation of the right ventricle within them. And we also don't have a correspondence between the axis of the long axis image and the axis of the short axis stack. And both of these issues hamper the design of a unified uh, network for the segmentation of both images at once. And so what I propose is to transform these images during the pre-processing stage to a unified or a, a common 3D space using the information provided by the DICOM, and then to compute three things. An average centroid position that corresponds to the average between the center of the long axis image and the center of the short axis stack. I identify the Z axis of the short axis stack and the X axis of the long axis image. And I use this information to transform the two images to a canonical pose in which we know the orientation of the heart and we have a correspondence between the axis of both images. And so we transform the long axis image such that the image is now centered on the average center that we found, which is assumed to be a point within the heart as these images tend to be acquired uh, centered on the heart region. And uh, with the vertical axis of the, long, the new long axis image aligned with the Z axis of the short axis stack. So going up down in this image is the same as going along the short axis stack now. So, and then we apply a similar transformation to the short axis stack, centering the image and then rotating in plane such that the X uh, axis is aligned with the X axis of the rotated long axis image. These transformations also account for a scaling component in order to resample the image to a fixed uh, spacing, with the exception being the Y axis of the long axis image, and I will explain why later on. So these steps occur in a pre processing step, and there are a few more to finish the transformation to the canonical pose that occur during the training stage, and that I will mention later on. So now, with respect to the architecture, I propose this cross-view UNET architecture, XUNET, that tries to simultaneously segment both uh, the images. And so it, this architecture is based on the 3D and 2D UNET configurations proposed by Fabian Isens in the NN UNET work. And so here you have an example of the 3D UNET for the segmentation of the short axis stack, with the differences being the input size of the network and the use of the switch activation rather than the leaky ReLU activation. It's a six level UNET with four level deep supervision. A similar network could be thought of for the long axis um, segmentation. However, these two networks would be trained independently and without any sharing of information. Um, so what I did was first to sum the losses of both networks so that they can be jointly trained and so the back propagation steps are applied jointly to both streams. And then I added a, few, a set of cross view models that allow the sharing of information from one stream to the other in order to take advantage of the spatial context that the other complementary view provides for the segmentation. And so uh, these modules are uh, applied on the three lowest resolution levels. And what they do is that they try to fuse the feature maps from the respective levels into a new set of features to be used during the expansion path to obtain the final segmentation result. These uh, cross-view models 
what they have to do is that they have to concatenate the two sets of features and then create a new set of uh, feature maps. And so in order for this to be possible, we have to take into account the correspondence between the dimensions of the feature maps. So in the short axis cross view model, this means to first resize the height dimension of the feature map, uh, the long axis feature map that corresponds to the depth uh, dimension, and then to transpose the coordinates and repeat the feature maps across the height dimension of the short axis. Now we have uh, feature maps of the same size that can be concatenated and fused using a one by one 3D convolution. In the long axis cross view models, the same principle applies, but now applying an average pooling over the height dimension of the short axis feature maps, followed by resizing and transposing before the convolution and one by one 2D convolution. So these new set of features are then used on the expansion path. However, for this, um, uh, approach to be effective, the feature maps and therefore the input images must have a spatial correspondence, a pixel to pixel spatial correspondence. And in order for this to be true, we have both images must cover the same physical space. And so what I do in order to guarantee this is to apply a few extra steps during the pre-processing of the images, but apply it on the fly during the training and inference. And so during training stage, first I apply some, some augmentations like mirroring, rotation, scaling, and translation. These are applied coherently, meaning that if I mirror, for example, the long axis image in the vertical direction, this means that I have to mirror the uh, short axis stack across the, the stack, so in the Z axis. Or if I scale the X dimension of the short axis uh, stack, I have to scale by the same amount the X dimension of the long axis image. Then you also have some set of intensity transformations like Gaussian noise, brightness, contrast, and gamma correction. After obtaining augmented versions of the image pair, I resample and path the, uh, the Z axis of the short axis stack, and I center crop both images. And this is done to make sure and guarantee that we have the same physical space coverage in both images. So the short axis stack is resampled to nine millimeters and padded to 20 slices, which means a coverage of 180 millimeters, which fits perfectly with the 160 pixels that the long axis network is expecting at 1.125 millimeters. And the same can be thought for the X dimension. So these are the input images to the network and the network is joint network unified uh, model is trained using an atom optimizer with these settings with which I, I like the soft dice plus cross entropy loss with deep supervision and no weight regularization. In terms of inference scheme, we investigated the usage of test time augmentation with coherent mirroring, the ensemble of models, and we applied connected component analysis and whole filling for uh, post-processing. In terms of results, the, um, we started, I started with an ablation study in which uh, I fixed some of the training settings, like a thousand epochs and spatial transformations only without test time augmentation or ensemble. And from the baseline models, which were independent uh, UNET models, I started adding each one of the core mo proposed models. So the uh, fused pre-processing, the fused augmentation, and the fused model. And these led to incremental improvements of the segmentation metrics. Afterwards, I did an additional set of experiments in which I started including intensity-based augmentations. I increased the number of epochs. I used test time augmentation and used ensemble modeling. And all of them also led to improvements on the, on the results. And the final and better result was obtained with all of these techniques combined with an ensemble of four XUNET models. These were the trained models that were submitted for the evaluation of the test set. And the results were these, which are very similar to the ones that were obtained for the validation set and without major differences across the different pathologies that are covered by the test set meaning that the network generalized well to this uh, new uh, test uh, set. So as take home message, the three core contributions led to a significant accuracy improvement over the baseline approach with the UX UNET model partially explaining this accuracy boost. And more importantly, when we qualitatively look at the segmentation result, this improvement seems to be particularly noticeable in the short axis stack, as we have less spurious right ventricle predictions on slices above the basal slice. So it's like the long axis stream help the short axis stream learn which slice to segment and which not to segment. And then the usage of test time augmentation ensemble modeling also led to significant improvement.
As future work, I intend to further investigate the use of cross-view models, like the number of models, their location within the network, and the inner working of each model, to investigate the usage of other augmentation routines, and also to improve the inference routine in order to better deal with the potential variability found among cardiac MRI images in clinical practice. Thank you very much for your attention.